Okay, this is chapter 18, Poisoning. And again, this is another one of those chapters where you have a lot of information. I'm not going to be able to go over all the information in it, but I'm going to highlight some of the main points just so that you have a, a brief overview. So, um, what is a poison? Well, it's anything that can harm you. So, oops, let me undo that real quick. Anything that can harm someone. And we have different ways of taking in the poison. So it can be ingested. So it be like taking a pill, uh, pill form, or if you drink some kind of poison, that would be ingested. It can be inhaled. So something like... Um, C, um, carbon monoxide, which we're going to talk about, that would be inhaled. It's odorless, tasteless. Um, there's really no way to to know that you're taking it in other than some of the symptoms that occur. Can be injected. So this could be like a sting or a bite from a snake where you've been envenomated. That would be injected. Um, also, oh, drugs. If you if somebody was injecting too much heroin, that would be like injecting a poison if they overdosed. Um, absorbed. So this would be anything through direct contact. Probably the best example I could think there are some of the um, the poison dart frogs. <laughs> I know. That's an odd way to think of it, but they have a poison that can be absorbed through the skin. And there are drugs that can be absorbed through the skin and other poisons, but that's the first thing that came to my mind was a poison dart frog. Just by touching those, you can, uh, you can die from that. So um, you have four, four different forms of poisons. So we have solid state. Which again would be like a, a pill. You have um, a liquid state. So if we were thinking about household cleaners, bleach would be poisonous, and that would be a liquid state. So would um, antifreeze. Antifreeze is a common poison that, um, for some reason, dogs like the taste of it, and and sometimes. They'll be poisoned if they, well, any time they drink it, they're going to be poisoned, but sometimes they'll end up drinking it if you leave it out, and that's a poison, and it's also poisonous to humans. Um, you have sprays, which are like cleaners around the house. In fact, there's two different um, forms that you don't want to combine. So you, well, I shouldn't say two different forms. There's, um, two different household chemicals that you want to be really careful that you don't combine, which is bleach and ammonia. If those two get combined, it creates chlorine gas, and um, that's exactly what they used to use in the trenches in World War I to kill off people. It'll burn your lungs, sear your lungs. It, it, it's poisonous, and uh, you can die from it. And then you have gases, again, like carbon monoxide. So it's probably a, a real good... Um, example. So around the home, let's, since we're already on that subject, let's talk a little bit about around the house, what you might have around the house that could be poisonous. We talked about antifreeze. So you have antifreeze, medicines of course. You have um, like corrosive Chemicals like Drano is really corrosive. Muratic acid, if you have pools, which is a hydrochloric acid, all those are poisonous to just to breathe in. That's, that corrosive material will destroy your lungs. You have fuels, you have gasoline, kerosene, all that stuff setting around the house most likely. Um, you have pesticides. 
and just common cleaners that you have around the house are poisonous and we talked about combining bleach and ammonia and that's that's poisonous and would definitely um, do a lot of harm and could potentially kill you so what do we do for somebody that has ingested a poison how do we care for somebody like that so the care <clears throat> is going to depend on really what you find um, the first thing you want to do is if you find somebody that's unresponsive trouble breathing maybe they have um, severe pain severe pain or um, anything that's life-threatening so let's just put that down so anything that's that appears to be life-threatening you want to call 911 so this is your first step call 911 if if you find or you find a bottle that that tells you to immediately call 911 maybe they've taken something um, otherwise if there are, are if they're not experiencing any life-threatening conditions or none of the other ones that I've listed and they seem to be okay you can call poison control first so this is how you decide do I call 911 or do I call poison control well if there's anything that's life-threatening which is what I included there you're gonna call 911 if it doesn't appear to be life-threatening there are no visible signs nothing that you can see um, you'll call poison control and the first thing you want to do and this is if no signs no signs no life-threatening signs or you're, you're not directed by a product you know a lot of products will tell you call poison control or some will say call 911 immediately if ingested so you go by the directions but it doesn't matter what the directions say if you see any of these life-threatening conditions you call 911 first <clears throat> so um, the first thing, step that we want to take here is we want to identify the poison so we need to be able to tell poison control exactly what they they took in so we want to identify the poison and there's a couple things to remember to, to tell the person you contact most likely you're going to talk to a nurse or a pharmacist or somebody that really knows and understands these medications or, or poisons that you're dealing with um, the first thing you want is the name of the product or poison that they took in you ideally if you can tell this is not always you won't always be able to tell try to give an estimate of the amount if you can get an exact estimate that's good but if you can't try to determine some sort of estimate write down what time it happened that's really important so and then we have the age and weight of the person because that's all going to factor in as the poison starts to go through their body and any symptoms any symptoms you observe are all really important to let the operator know let's move over here so we got a little bit more room all right so four you uh, will just follow their advice so whatever advice they give to you you'll follow that so they may tell you to induce vomiting or um, give them something to dilute the poison it all depends 70% of um, all calls to poison control typically can be solved outside of an ER or hospital without um, emergency medical response depending of course on what they took in um, if they determine like you call them and give them that information um, and they think 911 needs to be called they'll call from there and they'll probably let you know that they're calling just so that um, you will expect EMS to arrive if the person uh, has taken in some sort of poison and, and you're having them wait so you've called poison control and you're gonna have them wait and you want them to um, reduce the chance that they're going to get this 
poison into their bloodstream. You can lay them down on the left side. This will slow digestion. It'll put the um, side of the stomach that's going to go down to the intestines. It's going to put it on the higher side, making digestion or slowing digestion just a little bit. Of course, not very much, but it may buy you some time. And then save any containers. So if it's like a pill bottle or a cleaner, save those. Save the containers because um, you may need to get information off of that. All right, so that's most ingested poisons. And your book's going to go into alcohol intoxication or alcohol poisoning, um, a lot of different drugs and how to care for those. There was so much information I couldn't possibly go over all of it. So. I wanted to go over some of the common ones that you, you might possibly experience. Here's one of the most common poisons or poisonings that happen. It's carbon monoxide. Very common. It's a leading cause of poisoning in the US. And mainly because of cars, um, cars being left in garages, people sleeping in cars. Probably uh, one common way that um, people are exposed to carbon monoxide from cars is after they've ingested alcohol, they go to sleep in a running in a running car. And this doesn't just happen when people ingest alcohol; it's just more common. But if you go to sleep in a running car, you're more likely to experience carbon monoxide poisoning because the carbon monoxide coming out of the exhaust will filter up into the car. Just like you can, when you're driving down the road and let's say a skunk has been run over and you can smell that smell in your car just by driving by, well, carbon monoxide can easily get into your car. That, that right there, that example should show you how easy it is for gases to get in your car because carbon monoxide is odorless. You won't know that you're experiencing carbon monoxide and one of the main symptoms is headache, um, disorientation, and so people um, end up not thinking correctly because of it. And really what's happening is hypoxia, so lack of oxygen to the tissue, so low oxygen. and What's happening is the hemoglobin, and I explained this to you um, when we talked about red blood cells in the lungs. So you've got the red blood cells and they've got hemoglobin in there, and there's four sites on the hemoglobin that oxygen binds to. But the only problem is carbon monoxide is 200 times uh, more likely to bind to hemoglobin than oxygen. And so the care you want to give to somebody course is get them out into the fresh air. That's your first step. Fresh air right off the bat. Call 911. You always want to call when you suspect carbon monoxide poisoning because what they're going to do is bring 100% O2 and that's going to speed up getting that CO2 out of their system. It might take about 30 or 40 minutes for somebody and at normal, the normal percent of oxygen in the air is 21 percent and that might take somebody four to five hours to recover where you could be 30 or 40 minutes with 100 percent of oxygen so that's why you always want to call um, you want to monitor breathing and you want to put them in the recovery position if they're unresponsive and um, you always want to seek medical help because when they get medical help they're going to do a blood test and that can determine how much carbon monoxide is in their system anyway that's a brief overview I had to go really quick I just want to hit some of the most common ones I hope this helps out and um, there's a lot more information in that chapter so go through it read it and um, I'll see you in the next video